Hey guys, Ash here again at Flights of Reviews, and this is a look at the startup on the iFly 737NG for FSX. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on how to get this aircraft up and running. So if you were to purchase this payor add-on for your FSX experience, you would get an idea of some of the steps you would be going through. Uh, I want to start off by telling you guys I did install the patch that iFly has put out now, the Service Pack 1 patch. It's not to be confused with uh, FSX Service Pack 1 or 2. It's a service pack on their forums for this aircraft that improved a lot of the things about it. Uh, some of the things that improved is uh, better logic in the vertical navigation of the autopilot. Uh, it just did a lot of bug fixes. Uh, and it did improve some of the click spots. They're not perfect, but they are much improved from what I had expected before. Uh, it wasn't even in the release notes that that had been fixed, but they do seem a lot better, and that was one of my large gripes with this aircraft. So anyways, let's get started. Going to our overhead panel, we're going to go ahead and flip on the battery, which is going to give us power. And go ahead and switch the electrical panel here over to the battery showing us that it's discharging with negative 17 amps and we're showing 23 volts which is plenty so we're gonna go ahead and engage the standby power and bus transfers to auto uh, you will notice that on the iFly the uh, safety covers on your switches come up when you click on them there is no clicking required to close them. Once the switch is in a position that the cover can go closed, it automatically closes over it. So uh, that's interesting. I haven't seen a lot of aircraft do that. Uh, but it does let you know that uh, pretty quickly that the switches are where they need to be. Uh, I'm just going to, again, uh, show you the quick start for this aircraft. I want to prephrase by saying this is not correct by checklist or procedure. I'm just showing you quickly here. I don't. Uh, I'm not intending for this to be a tutorial. Uh, there's plenty of 737NG tutorials scattered around the YouTube and the web. Uh, it's not a hard plane to start up. I just uh, don't want people always in my comments saying, oh, you missed that or that. I understand that. I'm not <laughs> trying to produce a tutorial for you guys. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just do the fuel pumps here. We're going to start the APU. Uh, you, you'll notice we get a low pressure enunciation and the exhaust gas temperature on the uh, APU will begin to come up. It will go up around 800 Celsius and then come back down to around 4. Uh, so while we're waiting for that to start up, you can go ahead and see that uh, some of the uh, the ECAS here and some of the primary instruments are starting to come up, but we're a long ways from uh, being ready to fly this aircraft. Uh, I have been impressed with the improvements that have been made with the SP-1 patch, and that is definitely not the end of the patches. So uh, It's great to uh, see that iFly is supporting this aircraft so well. One of the other things that they fixed was they uh, did make the runway turnoff lights work now. So uh, that where that was non-functional before, it's totally functional now. So we're going to go ahead and get an enunciator that the APU generator is up, and we can go ahead and use that for power. Uh, again, the click spots seem better. That was pretty hard to get at previously. Uh, just for the point of this review, I do have the IRS is set to align instantly. I didn't want to wait the 15 minutes it takes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and flip the yaw damper on. These safety switches on the spoilers and flight control backups, etc., are all down, so they're in their correct positions. Going to go ahead and check that the crossfeed valve shows uh, that it's working and functioning. I'm going to go ahead and flip on the fuel pumps. Uh, working from this panel, we can go ahead and turn on the uh, cabin and utilities. Uh, we have drive lights on, that's normal. These are the uh, mechanical gear drives for the generators on the turbines that provide power once the engine's started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, come up. Uh, all this looks correct. We can go ahead and set no smoking and fasten seat belts to their automatic positions. Coming up here, 
uh, probe heat on, window heat on, and here's one of those cl click spots that I like to complain about. Uh, maybe you'll have better luck. As you can see, I cannot get at this switch. Uh, this is going to continue to flip the test switch, so uh, I normally have to uh, get over here in the right seat, pan up, and uh, switch it on. Again, here, uh, I don't understand this with iFly. They, they set the electrical uh, flight control switches off uh, to start with, er, which makes no sense since, uh, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter because the engines aren't running. We're not going anywhere yet anyways, but uh, <laughs> at least with the electrical system on, with once the APU and the turbines come up, they can be driven, uh, and you're stuck until the engines are started on the other ones. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and come down and uh, turn our APU bleed air on. We're going to go ahead and see the duct pressure come up and turn the isolation valve to auto and go ahead and start the uh, position light to show the ground crews that we will be starting soon. I'm going to come down here, clear the master cautions, uh, show you the FMC real quick. We're going to do a position initialize. We're at gate Alpha 26 at Denver International or KDEN is the identifier. But I'm going to use this position as it's usually more accurate. Uh, we're going to go over to route. So K Dunn is still on the scratch pad. Hit the line select key. Let's go to Las Vegas. So K L A S. Flight number F1. Uh, we can go ahead and activate. Our execute light's going to come on, showing we have enough data that the FMC can chew on. Gross weight. Uh, this plane does come with a calculator for all the models, etc. You can really do a nice job of picking your passengers, uh, where they are, how much cargo, how much fuel, etc. And it'll give you the numbers uh, that you'll need to input into the FMC. For us, we have a gross weight of 145,000. And we're going to say no reserves. The tanks are full. There's no way we'll use that much fuel. Cost index of 100. Cruise altitude. We'll say FL350, and we'll check our total air temperature of 24 Celsius and put that into the outside air temperature. And we're going to go ahead and execute that. Uh, this is cruise wind if you know it. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit inertial, initial reference again. We're going to use 5 degrees of flaps to take off, and our center of gravity is 32.2%. Uh, the plane did just trim itself for takeoff. And we'll go ahead and confirm the V-speeds for takeoff. Uh, I haven't called the tower yet to uh, get our departure runway yet, so we'll leave that blank. Uh, it's calculated our cruise, best altitude, destination. Clearly, you can enter your legs here. Uh, pretty standard for Boeing FMC. Uh, if I were just going to use flight sims, uh, standard... Uh, ILS system or excuse me IFR uh, system we'll just do a direct to because they'll give us the vectors to that destination uh, so that's the FMC that's just a real simple setup of the FMC you can go ahead and see that our route is already planned KLAS is 544 nautical miles away uh, go ahead, we're going to go ahead up here and flip the flight directors to on uh, since everything seems to be aligned up here, we can go ahead and begin the pushback. I know that I don't have any of the packs on or that that you would have if you really had passengers in the aircraft. Uh, I usually don't set all that up until I do engine start. So we're going to go into the simulation menu under the FMC, and there is a pushback command right here. So we're going to say pushback... Uh, 98 feet, I'm going to say 120 straight, and we're going to go ahead and start now. And as you can see, the aircraft is being pushed back. Standard procedure is to start the uh, right engine first, so we're going to go ahead and flip the switch to ground using both igniters, and we're going to go ahead and see that the N2 internal turbine is coming up, the compressor stage. 
And uh, I read somewhere that 20% is correct, and I've read, I've watched some real startup videos of the 3.7, and I saw the real guys doing it around 25%. So uh, I pretty much do it when the uh, right around there, or when the compressor starts to uh, not gain any more off the starter motor. So as you can see, fuel flow is coming up in two pressure. The EGT is well within the range. We don't have a hot start condition. And we'll go ahead and let that turbine stabilize. Set the parking brake. Uh, I'm pretty sure this plane uses a standard FSX turbine startup. Uh, I don't see anything too radical about it compared to the stock aircraft. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start the left engine. And again, we'll wait for the N2 to get up around 25%. fuel on. You can also see that the start valve enunciator is on. These are our takeoff limits for our N1 EGT fuel flow. There's also a uh, systems page to show you flight controls and things of that nature. I believe the real 3.7 would show you the gear position, excuse me, the tire pressures as well. Uh, so that is a really basic startup of this aircraft. We could go ahead and arm the auto throttle and uh, give ourselves an input and indicated airspeed, our runway heading, and our initial assigned altitude. As you can see, the FMC already pre-programmed the uh, pressurization system that we would be cruising at 350, and that our landing altitude is 2,200 feet MSL. Uh, we can go ahead up and flip on our flight controls from the engines and at, turn our trim air on and go ahead and set the cabin controls to auto for the uh, climate the controls for the cargo and the aircraft that is a very basic startup of this aircraft uh, I can go ahead just for fun I'll show you the new runway turnoff lights that they did uh, patch in they work really well at night so uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with them uh, hopefully I can show you those at night before I'm done with the uh, series of reviews on this aircraft. Uh, next, I'll show you uh, taxi out to the runway, some of the setup there, and a takeoff. And I hope this has been informative. Uh, there will be many more reviews to come on this aircraft and others. Uh, I was out with the flu for a couple of weeks. Uh, it seems something's been going around, so, uh, and I managed to get it. Uh, I hope all is well with you guys, and I hope you stay tuned for more flight sim reviews. Thanks again.